Welcome to part 2 of my beginner's guide to Elden Ring. This guide is meant to take you through a logical progression of the game, which progressively gets harder dungeons and bosses, as well as to point out several useful items that can help you in your journey throughout the length between. If you're new here, check out part 1. I also have a beginner's guide to get OP if you want to get some easy levels before you start your journey. For the part 2 of the beginner's guide, we're going to take a break from Limgrave and instead venture south into the Weeping Peninsula. Start at the Aguil Lake south side of Grace and follow the trail south. You will come to the Bridge of Sacrifice, which is being guarded. You can take out all the enemies on the bridge, or you can just run past them. The only important thing to grab on the bridge is a Stone Sword Key, which can be used to unlock in statues. Once past the bridge, there will be a Sight of Grace on your right hand side. Once activated, continue forward to talk to a girl, Irina, that will give you a note for her father. Go ahead and accept it and that will start her quest line. Continue to follow the trail south, and you will find a Teardrop Scarab that will drop the Mighty Shot Ash of War. This Ash of War is for light and normal bows. I like to use it to start fights against enemies that I know will aggro onto me before I have a chance to sneak up on them. Farther to the south, you will find a merchant. He doesn't sell anything too interesting, but if you can spare the runes, I would pick up the Stone Sword Key. I just like to always have them, just in case I need them. Even farther to the south, you will notice a little pillar on the map. As mentioned in the previous video, this is the location of a map fragment for this region. So we're going to go pick that up before continuing. Be careful if you are here at night, as there is a knight's cavalry that walks the route. Go ahead and rest in morning in order to avoid fighting him for now. There is also a golem at the foot of the castle in the distance. Be careful, he has a bow and he will be taking shots at you. Thankfully, he's a pretty bad aim, so you really shouldn't have to worry. While here, you should also see an herb tree sapling on a ledge. Go ahead and parkour your way over there in order to get another golden seed. Once you have retrieved the seed, make your way back to the castle morn rampart side of grace. Use a spirit spring to jump onto the tower and get a giant turtle shell shield. Not the best shield in the game, but if you want to cosplay as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, you'll need this. Go ahead and jump down and head towards a small tower to the north. This is Ordis's Rise. It'll have you seek three wise beasts to open the door. And by wise beasts, it really means spirit turtles. And by seek, it means to unalive. There is one in the bushes to the left, an invisible one in the puddle on the right hand side, and another one on the trail right in front of the entrance. Go ahead and climb the rise to get a memory stone. Memory stones increase the number of spell slots you have access to, so they're imperative for anybody who wants to cast spells. There are eight in total, and these guides will show you where to get each and every one of them. From the rise, we're going to head to the north. There are some mages that summon an onyx lord, and further beyond that will be our first dungeon in the Weeping Peninsula, the Impaler's Catacombs. The mages shouldn't be too difficult of an encounter, and unfortunately there isn't a reward for defeating the group of enemies, so feel free to just sprint past them and make your way to the dungeon, but if you want to fight them, have fun. This dungeon can be a little tricky. There is a room when you enter the floor rises up and impales you on the spikes in the ceiling, probably where it gets the name of the Impaler's Catacombs. You have to step on the floor to cause it to rise, and then jump under it to find a lever to the dungeon. The dungeon itself doesn't have any useful loot, but feel free to explore to your heart's content. The boss of this dungeon is an Urshree Watchdog and Minion Imps battle. I told you you'd be seeing those Watchdogs again. If you have Crystal Darts, you can use them to make the enemies here fight each other. I also recommend using your summons, as you can quickly get overwhelmed from the numerous enemies. The reward is Demi-Human Ashes Spirit Summons. I like them because you have 5 summons at once, but they are a little weaker than your wolf, so you can take your pick. From here, we're going to parkour across some fallen structures to the west to get to the Forest Tower Lookout. At the top of this tower, there's a hand ballista, which is basically a slower and stronger crossbow. This can be a fun range weapon that deals a lot of damage while you use your summons to distract the enemies. From here, continue west to find the Earthbore Cave. You'll see a chest when you enter, and as you approach, the floor will break away. This dungeon does involve some platforming, and it is very dark, so make sure you have your torch just to be ready. The boss of this dungeon is a rune bear. This enemy can be very challenging, and you will see several of them in the overworld you play. Consider letting yourself die a couple of times, just so you can get the dodging right. A little further to the west, you will find the demi-human forest runes. The boss is a demi-human queen and more minions. This is actually an easier fight than the Urdry Watchdogs, but I wanted to try to minimize backtracking as much as possible. The reward is a demi-human queen staff and a crystal burst sorcery. Kind of a close range shotgun blast, but magic. Just to the north of the runes, you will find some Miranda Sprouts worshipping a Faith Knot Crystal Tear. Once you've got that, make your way up the side of the mountain in order to get the Church of Pilgrimage. You can talk to Melina at most sites of grace located in churches for a little bit of lore. In the church is also a sacred tear. From the church, make your way down the western side of the mountain to find the Tomb Sword runes. 
On the top of some nearby rubble, you will find another teardrop scarab that will drop the Divine Fortification Incantation. It increases your resistance to holy damage, so not super important right now. Instead, focus on finding the cellar to the north of it. In the cellar, you will find a handful of enemies, but the chest at the end has a wing scythe. This is a fun weapon that also causes blood loss, so try it out, and if you have the stats, it can be really good. It does take 24 faith to use properly, so you might not be there yet. I will post a guide for different early game builds in the near future. After getting the scythe, go ahead and warp back to the Church of Pilgrimage. From here, we're going to make our way south to the Morn Tunnel. While following the trail, you will see a bridge. Instead of crossing it, head to the right to see a spirit spring. Jump down onto it and continue south to the cliff face. You will find the entrance there. There is some platforming in this dungeon, but thankfully, most of the falls aren't fatal, so just have fun with it as you explore. Again, there isn't anything important to miss, so just collect any smithing stones you find as you make your way through the dungeon. A friendly reminder, the miners here do have hard skin, so you'll need to two-hand your weapon, or have a blunt weapon to damage them properly. The boss of this dungeon is a scaly misbegotten, and the reward is a rusty anchor. The boss is pretty quick, and like most of these early game bosses, you'll see more of him in the overworld, so practice fighting him here. I'm kind of rushing through these dungeons to get footage for you all, so I'm just going to use my wolves to make it quicker, but try to fight all these guys without using your summons if at all possible. From the Morn Tunnel, we're going to make our way to the alien village outskirts side of Grace. Find the side of Grace before tackling the village, that way if you die, you're a lot closer to the battle. We're going to take the Spirit Spring back up, but this time use it to jump to the opposite side of the valley. You can also just cross a bridge we ignored earlier. Once you've found the side of Grace, you'll want to beat the enemies in the village. They do cause madness buildup, and you can tell they'll cause that by the fire burning in their eyes. So be mindful of the orange bar filling up, you'll take some burst damage, and be stunned for a couple seconds if it maxes out. In this village, the two main things you're looking for is a sacred tier at the Kalu Baptismal Church and the Flame of Frenzy Incantation. This is basically the incantation version of the shotgun spell. It does cause madness buildup as you use it, so be careful. To the southwest of the village, you will notice some tombstones sticking out the side of the mountain. You can use these to parkour your way down and find a teardrop scare that drops a lightning strike incantation. This is one of the bread and butter incantations for a faith build, and it lets you strike enemies from a distance. There are several bats in this area, so just be careful as they can quickly gang up on you. Finally, make your way back to the Church of Pilgrimage one more time. We're going to follow the trail straight forward to the Tomb Sword Catacombs. Look for the spirit jellyfish near the entrance. They shouldn't attack you unless you attack them. After you enter and head down the stairs, you will see a little fog wall. You can use the Tomb Sword keys we've been gathering to enter. I don't think this one's worth it right now. The only reward is a Nomadic Cookbook 9, which gives you access to craft Rancor pots. So I recommend you save them for later. This may also be a good time to note that anytime you do something that activates a text box, you need to click out of the text box in order to attack, or else you'll just be walking around the enemy like an idiot, like me. Now for a fun tip. If you bought Margit's Shackle from Patches earlier, you can use it to deactivate traps from a distance, which can be useful in dungeons like this. It can also be used to dispel fake walls, but we haven't had to worry about that just yet. For this dungeon, you actually have to jump on the fire pillar and ride it up to find the switch. The boss of this dungeon is a Cemetery Shade, a fairly weak boss overall, but it is very fast. If it catches you, it can do massive damage, so be careful. The reward for this dungeon is a legendary summon Mutel the Headless. This summon can carry you through most of the game, so play with him a little and see if you like him. This will conclude part 2 of my beginner's guide. I hope you found it helpful. Please leave a like and comment for any requests, follow for more Elden Ring content, and GG everyone.